Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. We are here in New York City with uh, my personal trainer, my guest, a man who's <laughs> changed my life, who's made me understand that, you know, you can, you can indulge, mm -hmm. but you just have to be accountable. You have to hold yourself accountable. <laughs> we, we're doing the six cheat day a week system yeah. here. Halkius core, Halkius fitness. <laughs> Halkius fitness. <laughs> By the way, like every, every boomer diet always failed because every boomer diet was like based on this crazy premise, which was the entire boomer ecosystem was all about themselves. So every diet was literally like, they're like, Every diet, like that, my mother would explain to me. She'd be like, "No, no, 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 no! I can have anything I want. Right? I just have to be accountable. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. if I have a, a chocolate cake, then I just have a glass of water later. <laughs> I'm like, that's, that's that's the that's such fat logic too. Where yeah. it's like, I remember just get my go to move on the road was like, well, I'll get wings, but I'm getting a salad as well. Right. And to me, that's equal that equals out. Yeah, it completely equals out. Yeah, that's some immigrant shit too. Of like. Yeah. We'll make you we'll make you a full, a six course meal, uh, spaghetti to open up, lamb chops. You know what I mean? A, a soup, a chowder. But then we got a nice light romaine afterwards. Yeah, and you're good to go, and That's, you're fine. Yeah, you'll be okay. Yeah. It's like such a fucking, it's uh it's a mind fuck out there. It's now we were talking about the writer strike. Uh, for before we started, which I know none of my fans have an interest in, <laughs> and they tell me that, right. you know, they're like, they "I'm not a theater kid. Fuck off." I don't, I don't want, want gay Hollywood machinations. I don't want gay Hollywood stuff. I'm just wondering because you are a labor leader. That's right. What do you know? What's going on? With I that? don't. You don't. I have no fucking clue. <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. We're podcasters. Where's, your friend? Where's Hassan Piker? Yeah. <laughs> what's going on? Give them what they want. My guess is just writers. Once everything became digital, uh, they were just like, oh, this is something we don't, there's no rules, so we just won't pay anyone. Right. That's almost certainly what happened. And you hear about it with animation where they're like, they're like, okay, uh, we're just going to get, uh, you know, 6,000 Taiwanese 12 year olds right. to render each image instead of paying like real animators or, you know, just like, yeah. they're just. Anywhere they can fuck your ass, they will fuck Anywhere your ass. Anywhere they can take it. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's And I have, a, I have a thing happening now. And it, my interest in this isn't selfish. It's for the uh, it's other for the people. people. Nobody loves writers more than me. <laughs> Nobody loves a Hollywood sitcom writer. Nobody loves a Hollywood <laughs> sitcom writer. They've all been said lovely things about me on Twitter. They've said very nice things about my friend Joe Rogan. <laughs> I mean, nobody is closer <laughs> with the Echo Park, Silver Lake, yes. Riders crew 100%. than I am. So mm -hmm. my concern is for them. I wish some of them looked funnier. Mm. Or not that they're all comedy writers, but in that, can you bring up that WGA thing on Twitter? You know, it just, I, I didn't feel bad. They're not great at the marketing angle. They should have had like Andrew Schultz direct the WGA, okay. like Writers Guild, because so, it's just like sad sack hipster pieces of shit right. being like, it's not right. And you're like, oh, God. You wanted, um, you wanted a little more levity. I wanted just, you know. A whoopee cushion. I wanted them to just make just make people care. Mm -hmm. Because I got a thing now with a, one of these writers. Good person. Yeah. And he's like, you know, he's going to do it. He's going to strike. I get it. But then we're going to be fucked. So there, it's Long Island, call me by your name. It's a Long doing. Island, call me by your <laughs> yeah, name. Yeah, everyone's obese. It's a very You're the thinnest it's a, man in the it's cast. It's a very fat, call me. <laughs> well, I was talking about this the other day. I was talking about the trans thing the other day, yeah. and I saw you and Theo a little bit, and I'm like, is it one of the issues that some of them are like getting fat? Because I think that like any minority can't be fat in the beginning. Right. Like if gay people had come out and then immediately just. Like, got Bears. in league with fat activism. Mm -hmm. Nobody, like, they accepted hot gay men first. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta Bears were not the first. No. They're not the Marines of being no, accepted. they're not the tip of the spear. <laughs> no. You don't throw the fats no. out there. You gotta, pieces of ass. You gotta, you gotta, it's gotta be, like, hot people yeah. first. Because, 100%. like, then, like, straight people start going, you know, I might fuck that guy. I of don't course. know. And then, then all of a sudden, they're like, okay, maybe let's not kill that person. Right, right, But, right. you know, when, <laughs> right. when fats start getting involved, people start it's it, it becomes like now you're fighting a war on two fronts right 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 no no you're absolutely right and i agree with you tim fat phobia one of the biggest issues we're facing today it is without question it is atrocious <laughs> At, first of all planes should only have what 20 people i would say one on seat the... i would say each plane should yeah. have like 
eight like big. But you as a big man and myself, I, I call us people of size. Yeah. But we understand that the fat activism is a little much. It's getting yeah. a little much. You I, know. I agree with that. I understand that. Uh, People are uh, upset at it. No, nobody should be abusing fat. You shouldn't be walking around and, you know, abusing them. Right. But we can't demand. What does that look like? Walking well, around. I talk about it in my act. You know, in the 80s and 90s, fat women just got abused. Yeah. Like fat women were just abused. Like people would right. point at them and be like, look at this fat bitch. Right, and right, there are right. people that want to go back to that because sure. they're monsters. Right. But uh, we can't demand that the entire world remake themselves mm -hmm. for the fat people. But I would say if you had. It, look, yeah. if you put the fat consumer f forward on a, in an airline, oh, I think the situation. fat consumer is forward. <laughs> if you put the fat, <laughs> if you put the fat consumer on the forefront, yeah, everyone's having a better time. Right, a little extra leg room. It's a good point. Thing, I, I, I don't need long. I don't need more leg room. I need more width. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. On, a, on a plane seat, you're telling me that wouldn't be nice. If you're some skinny piece of shit to be able I to really, think, really open up those fucking those I think that, that if a fat person were to design a plane, yes. you would the, even the thin people would have a lot more fun. Oh, a lot more fun. It's a good point. The airlines would lose some money. They'd lose a lot of money. They'd Biscoff lose a lot cookies of money. would be the healthiest option. Biscoff cookies. The fact cookies, that there's a cookie with yeah. no cream involved, there's no chocolate chip, <laughs> they give us that glorified wafer, and yeah. they tell us that's... That's dessert. Well, you're in first class I'm now. I'm in first class now. It's yeah. better. It's much better. It's be it's the only luxury I'll never give up. 100%. I will live on the street. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, I will yeah. never give up the first class. You get on first class and you're like, oh, it, you think this is going to be the best flight of my life? And you're like, yeah. oh, they treat you like a human being. Yes. And that's it. That's, that's it. what first class is. It's just being treated like a human being. Yeah. When you were in the back of the plane, which I was for years, yep. in a middle seat, wherever uh, I could be. Is there anything worse? Nothing. Then when you are uh, on the aisle and the guy, it feels like fully full, fully full plane. Yeah. And they're like, this plane is mostly full. And you're like, fuck, someone's going to sit here. It's late. It's already done. You're like, oh my God. Yeah. People are, they've fucking, the yep. flight attendants are putting everything up. And you're like, is this happening? Is this really going to happen? And then you see someone rush on the plane and they're elated. They made their flight last second. And then the second they see they're sitting next to you, all that joy is gone. They're yeah. like, I should have just missed it and, I, and had a, an aisle to myself. I sat once on a plane. This is, I'm not even kidding. Yeah. With two of the fattest guys <laughs> in a row. <laughs> it was to the point where, and we were in, by the way, yeah. we were in a row uh -huh. that was like, you know, there's first class and then there's like the, the you know, the first, comfort plus, yes. whatever it is. We were in one of those first rows. So the people all, all looked at us as they were walking mm. back. Every, like an attraction <laughs> at the zoo. Yeah. <laughs> Every single person looked at that row where and did, was like, God damn it, yeah. look at it. Because it never happens where you have three huge of guys. Course. It was three big dudes. They're like, earn an, was, ex earn an extra cookie if you can tell us where his thighs end and his begin. Yeah, it it's was like, a tough, <laughs> it was a and, and Just one mass of flesh. Not one of us looked at each other. <laughs> And not one of us said anything to each other. And all of our faces were of <laughs> rage. Oh, dude. Cause rage. You, I've absolutely been there when I get a fat guy next to me. I'm like, yeah. the airline should step in. <laughs> what the yeah. fuck is this? The government should <laughs> step. I'll turn into a Marxist right now. The government yeah, should step go. in. Espe look, if there was a child in first yeah. class. They got to switch the fatty in the middle seat yeah. with that fucking, like, with that trust fucking, fund kid. Trust fund kid. That I hate, by the way, I hate children Should in first never class. be allowed. I hate them. Should never be allowed. I hate them on their iPads. Yeah. I hate them so much. I hate the attitudes they already have. 100%. Telling the, ho like, telling the uh, flight attendant, like, uh, just ordering them around a way you would be, like, embarrassed. Oh, it's adult. horrible. I'm More gonna... apple juice. Yeah, it's you know? disgusting. <laughs> I hate when a family's in first class and yeah. I go, Oh, all of you are. I've, my family was never in first class. No, no. So when I see an entire rich family in first class, I'm this like, it's despicable. Ugh. Kids have to be, you want to get them comfort plus, fine. Right. You cannot be in first class. If when I was a rich parent, I would just throw the kids in the back and go, guys, have some fun there. Be independent. Right. Do some stuff, you know, whatever you want to do. This is your taste of what reality is. This like. is reality, man. For four hours at a time, you'll get it and never again. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like, it's, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, do, do you think Bud Light suffers long term for this or have they even suffered? Like everyone's going, they've lost $6 billion. There's I guess no. that's stock yeah, valuation. How do we even know that yet? I don't even know happened. how we know. 
Also, didn't they? I didn't. I wasn't really paying attention. Obviously, yeah. I don't. I don't give a fuck that much. Right. But apparently, it was just like. I thought they said they made like a trans person their like spokesperson. No, it was like one thing. It was like they bought an ad on a, some girl's Instagram. Yeah, and everybody blew and it up. And everyone's like, how dare they? And it's so, you got to think, for, if you believe in like the no press, all press is good press. Yeah. Everyone's talking about Bud Light. You got a lot, you got retards buying them to shoot them with AK-47s. <laughs> yeah, that's And then you have gay yeah. people fucking, you know, yeah. doing doing body, illusion, body shots with, with Bud Light now. It's yeah. like, you know. And it's then you got me. I'll, I'll sip a little Bud Light. I called Luis Gomez ally. about it because Luis Gomez is Luis J Gomez, the of proprietor course. of the gas station of network. Course. <laughs> I called him and I talked to because I always talk to him about like stuff like brands and marketing yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. what do you think's going on here? And he's like, ultimately, he thinks it's a great move that like when when Rogan was having his thing with Spotify. There were thousands of articles that said the word Spotify and podcast in the same article. Right. All of a sudden, people now think of Spotify as the place for podcasts mm. where they never did before. Yeah. So even though there was controversy, there was this huge. So I'm wondering now if people are just, you know, if long term it's better. What if they go not? Maybe, maybe just maybe next is like OJ, like keep going. Ooh, that would be sick. Keep doing very yeah. controversial. OJ really should be a pitch man. Yeah. <laughs> What's he doing? He's well, in Vegas. he's one of the most well adjusted people I've seen. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. He's one of the most, like, if you see him on Twitter, like, of course. he makes good points. He's always, yep. like, kind Happy. of. Happy, smile on his face. Relaxed. And it, because I think he did what he, he wanted to do. Like, yeah. he was, like, how many people could kill someone who's bothering them, get away, get with, away it, with it, and then on the other side be like, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's got, look, morality aside, it's got to feel awesome to get away with. And not just, morality like, aside, not yeah. even just, like. He planned it out. He was studying for years. Crime the and way passion. He, it was like he did it. It was so clear the he did it. The way it was supposed to be done. Everyone knew he murdered his he wife. He probably <laughs> saw her and him fucking through right. the window and went, tonight's well, the didn't, night. Didn't he kill like her gay friend, not the guy she fucked? Was no, that? Ron Goldman was the guy she oh, okay. was fucking. And okay. he, I think one of the theories is that he saw them through the window. Right, right, right. And right, was right. like, it's on. And then he went in there and, you know, cut their heads off. <laughs> yeah. Which I'm against. <laughs> I'm against. Staunchly anti-decapitation. Staunchly anti that. That being said, I've never seen a person on social media that I, f I feel is in a better place. Yeah, he's happy. And look, he's it's amazing. A, if you kill someone and you get away with it so publicly, it's yeah. like, and let's we're forgetting the man is a Hall of Fame running back. The man we're is talented in we're levels forgetting. that people will never <laughs> be. He's an actor. That's his third he's act. a running back. He's been in he's been in uh he was he was almost gonna be the Terminator. Oh he was a finalist for the Terminator before Schwarzenegger got it. He's in all the uh uh the naked gun movies. I might have to put awesome. him fourth in my most American lives. I have uh the, my, the the people that have lived lives that can really only be possible yes. in America and my my top three and it's in no order but it's Donald Trump yeah Caitlyn Jenner right and Alex Jones and I might have to put OJ Simpson as fourth in terms of like lives that are really only possible in America for my money dude he might yeah. be right under DT he might be I like, agree with you because yeah oh I mean just the, truly a star and at USC. We haven't even thought about all the pussy he got. Oh, you know, I, I mean, mean he killed it. He's got literally, <laughs> but he's and now, yeah. now he's just in Vegas having a good time. Nobody, he's become this like. And I think fun. if people see him out now, like I got to be honest with you, I'm over it. I think a lot of people are over it. <laughs> I think a lot of, to be honest, I mean, I, I think, know what you're saying. You know though. what I mean? You're be at the same time. There's levels to that statement because you're, you know, having a life. We're having a nice little time here, but at the same time. I see him on I see him online and I don't think there's a murder. I, I think. don't I don't have any anger towards him. <laughs> I think let's see I what OJ's no got to say. I have towards that man. If I saw him in Vegas, gentlemen, if you didn't already know, it's tax season here in the U.S. Manscaped does work. Here's the thing about Manscaped. Yeah, it really is good. Right. I mean, it's one of those. Pro I sell a lot of products here. I believe in all of them. <laughs> but and it's important that it's tax season, by the way. You know, you don't want to pay your taxes with hairy nuts. That's the thing. Your boys downstairs are having fun. Make sure you spend your holiday tax money on the important things this year, like family, friends, and bowl deodorant. <laughs> join the eight, join the eight million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com and get twenty percent off. 
uh, with the code 83 weeks. And you get free shipping 20% off with the code 83 weeks. We, we know what it is. It's here. a great product. I've used it. It's great. I mean, everybody likes it. Uh, I use it. Everyone uses it. And um, a funny shaving story. That's a good idea. That's a good problem. One time, yeah. my friend uses another. He uses the wall groomer. Right. He uses the wall groomer. Right. And here's a problem with that. It's not. It doesn't have the skin safe technology yeah. that Manscaped does. So he was drunk yep. and in the tub. And he was using warm a bath too. Warm bath way. with a wall groomer and he cut off his cock. <laughs> bled out. He bled out. He was saved. <laughs> but he's a, he's trans now because he said to his wife, if it's gone, let's just explore other things. Yeah. She was weirdly down She's with it. She's bi, so he it's has cool. a pussy. <laughs> But two nuts. Yeah, but two nuts and a puss. <laughs> and she loves it. And she's jamming them all the time. And she just fucks the shit out of them with a strap on. It's fine. But that's a bad thing, by the but way. But if you're not, but if, if you're that's not that's ready one guy. For that, it's one guy. And it's a one in a million chance. What are the chance. chances that's happening to you? He says his life is better. He says his life is much better. But what are the chances are the it chances? happens to you? Not high, <laughs> so I would say Tim D is the code. The code is Tim D. It's, it's not eighty three weeks. Eighty three weeks. It's Tim D. The code is Tim D. That was a joke earlier on the thing. Um, um, so get twenty percent off free shipping with the code Tim D at manscaped.com. That's twenty percent off plus free shipping at the code manscaped.com. Don't just get your money back this year. Get your swagger back too with mm. Manscaped. Mm -hmm. I would be excited. I would kind of be really excited. I'd be like, hey, OJ, like, hey, can I get a photo? I'm a really big fan. No, legit, just for the Instagram. <laughs> I, would, it's, I mean, how many people are doing that? By the yeah. way, everybody's probably doing that. 100%. And, and imagine him thinking, like, when he's standing there, you know, in court and all this horrible stuff's coming out. I wonder if he thought... Like, hey, man, this is all going to shake out. Yeah. One day Donald Trump will be the president. <laughs> right, right, right. Bruce right. Jenner will transition to Caitlyn. Yep. And then I'm going to be in Vegas. And people are going to be actually coming up to me going, hey, I'm a big fan. The Nelk boys had him on the podcast. Like, Did they? He's kind of rehabilitated. <laughs> he's kind of rehabilitated. Is it? I would literally go up to O.J. Simpson and go, I am a huge fan. <laughs> and I would love a photo. I would get and the, I'm yeah. very confident he decapitated his wife and her lover. <laughs> but I would I would absolutely go up to him and go, I am a huge Big fan, fan. <laughs> massive fan of yours. Can I get a photo? And then I would put it on my Instagram and try to come up with a funny caption. And I think you'd figure it out, man. That's how over it I am. Of course. I'm kind of over it. I yeah. wouldn't do that with Dylan Roof. Sure. I wouldn't do that with someone I think is like, I think Dylan Roof is evil. Yeah. And because I think he went in, he targeted people based on their race. 100%. And I think that, that there, there's something inherently evil about a person who he, walks into a church. Yeah. But a house in Brentwood where you're sucking off a waiter <laughs> ain't a church. <laughs> that ain't a church. <laughs> and there's just different. It's not a church. And I'm, I'm not saying it's right. I'm it's not, not saying right. It's not right. But is it a house of worship? No. All the, yeah. Here's another fun angle. Yeah. If you really want to spin and you really want to start getting crazy with it. Let's. Being pro OJ. The reason he, he, what's one of the biggest signs of CTE is damage. It's brain damage, it's aggression, it's violence. So not only that, you could make him like, a t like by the way, the NFL, when OJ Simpson dies, will drop a nuclear bomb on the funeral home that he's in so that science doesn't get a hold of his brain. Right. Because it, like truly, he got, he went crazy because he was one of the best, I mean, dude, that motherfucker was playing when they had like one strap, one helmet, Right. You know what I mean? They had like one little he thing on the He was getting hit and getting taking hit. hits all the time. Yeah, he's a gladiator for your enjoyment. In many ways, if you love the NFL, you killed Nicole Brown Simpson. And a lot of people are okay with that. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you put it in those of, terms, they're good A with lot it. of people are okay with that. I got to be honest. Because, number one, people hate LA. Right. They hate Los right, Angeles. They right. hate... I've, there's never been a city that is hated more kind of justifiably mm -hmm. than LA. No one cares. A woman, now this might be wrong, this is probably <laughs> wrong, but a woman who's seen as a gold digger is not going to get the same level of sympathy as the Jews. Then as a, as the talented uh, man who's made the money. I'm not, hey, did I make the world? 
am I God? I'm reporting what happens. <laughs> if anything, this is a news show. This is a, I'm a media figure and I'm reporting the news from the guest <laughs> digital the, studio the guest in New studio. York City. I've been we are relitigating the O.J. Simpson murders I gotta be the guest digital studio. I got to be honest with you. I, there's not a man I'd be more excited to see in Las Vegas than O.J. Simpson. There's no, could you think of a person in Las Vegas you'd be happier to see than O.J. Mm. fucking Simpson? No, not re- I mean, I guess Carrot Top, Chris Angel. I would ask him for weight loss advice. <laughs> I would, I would hold myself accountable. I may text OJ my steps every night. Yeah. <laughs> That's how much I respect. You want an ongoing relationship? I love the Naked Gun. I great, adored those are great it. Movies. So, like, there's a there's a version of me that's at the end of every night going, OJ, I only got seventy five hundred in today. Because I'm on the road. He's like, don't worry about it, brother. Try to hit 12 tomorrow. We all make mistakes. Try to hit 12,000 tomorrow. He's like, keep the carbs, you know, after 3 p.m., no carbs. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, let's, let me also just throw this out. Please. And this might not, is he the worst father? Probably not. (laughs) He's probably not the worst dad in the world. (laughs) He's probably a pretty good dad, and he probably compensates for the incident he had right, right, right. by being a better father. I think this is the first place you're kind of starting to lose me. Really? I think murdering your mother really puts you, I would say- I don't think it's ideal. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm wondering, do, do his kids still have a That's relationship? That's a great question. I think they do. Could, could someone here- Look that up, look perhaps. That up? I'd Could love to one see of the that. producers here look right, that up. Right. See, guest digital, what you have to do is walk out with a loaded gun. <laughs> it's this is not the Jamie Vernon experience. You have to walk out, you have to put a gun in their head. Um I we kid, we kid, but um I think they actually stop us. I think they do. Interesting. I think they have a pretty good relationship with him. Because I did hear one theory that was uh that the son did it. The son did it. My mother was obsessed with that theory. <laughs> I think you got to realize I was in a Comedy Central sketch about O.J. Simpson. What I'd like the producers to do right. is if they can, I would like them to get up, just say no, J. And this may be the first time it is played. O.J. was a big part of my life. Yeah. Um, this was the massive trial. We watched the verdict in fifth grade. Right. We turned it on wow. in our school. There was a sketch called Just Say No, J. It was released Uh, on Comedy Central. It was one of these sketches that they would put between shows. Mm -hmm. And I played a kid who was playing with a DNA testing kit. My father in the sketch was playing with a Bronco, and my mother was uh, doing Marsha Clark's cookbook, uh, who was the prosecutor in the case. And the idea was that the O.J. Simpson trial had invaded the home of every American family Mm. to an unhealthy degree. And Comedy Central's marketing campaign was just say no, Jay. Stop wow. watching the trial. Start watching uh, what we're Central. doing. Start watching uh, reruns of Saturday Night Live. Yeah, and Mystery <laughs> Science Theater <laughs> yeah. and whatever, right? And Premium <laughs> Blend. Do we have this? Let's watch Just Say No. I would Jack. love to. Let's watch this. So this is you as a child. This is the first time this has been played on my podcast. I think. Uh oh. Hey, that's my ball. <laughs> Crushed it. I've been in this business for years. <laughs> Was it after that point that he told you he'd take the next flight? Yes. And, and you, wow, the dog's had enough. No check from Comedy Central. Wow. So, congratulations, that was, man. Thank you. <laughs> but that's. <laughs> Gas digital, the grotesque gas digital. <laughs> um, but that is where I, you know, this is how big the OJ Simpson trial was in the nineties. It's hard to explain to these youngins. Now, your mother, when she was, she was obsessed with the son did it theory. Yeah, she in an institution at the time, or she? No, my mother only went free. in when I was in my twenties. Okay, all right, nice. So she like what happens with schizophrenia? It either comes on hard in the twenties. Or it's usually kind of later in life hormonal menopause in wow. the 40s, midlife crisis, 40s, things like that. More common in women than men, still happens in men. Um, but usually it comes on early. Yeah. But there are cases where I think 
hurt the hormonal thing. I think that's a lot of long COVID. Not that it's schizophrenia, <laughs> right. but it's menopausal. Right, right, right. A lot of it's hormonal. Yeah. Um, so the OJ, so that was one of my first gigs, one of my first things I ever did. Nice. Dude. And we went to this house in Connecticut, and my grandmother went with me, and it was just an, like an all day shoot, but it was cool. Yeah. And you, it was like, oh, I'm in this, I'm in this thing now. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, OJ, OJ, one of your first paying jobs. It, it was happening without him. One of my first paying gigs. So like, I'm in the business because of the juice. <laughs> Well, that's an important disclosure. It's an important disclosure. <laughs> as a journalist, as, as we've covered. As a journalist, <laughs> I want to make sure that everybody knows that I'm defending OJ, not right. the act, not the act, the totality of the person. He's a job creator. The totality of the person. I That was one of my first shoots, Sesame Street, and that. And I've, you know, on Sesame Street, I did the polka with Snuffleupagus, which you've, we've played Huge. that, I think. Yeah. And, uh, but that was my first, and I did an NYU student film. I've tried to get this guy to give me this student film. It's called Truck Stop. I don't want to say his name, sure. but I do, <laughs> but I won't. And I've tried, at, at, you know, ad nauseum to get this guy to give me uh, the student film, and he has not released mm. it to me. He's either embarrassed about it, but it's actually a great student film. And I was nominated for an acting award when I was like, I don't know, I was like maybe nine or something or 10 or and 11. Wh what's your role in truck stop? Uh, it's about a, a guy who abandons his family at a New Jersey truck stop. Nice, dude. And it's me and this woman and my sister and we're all abandoned and we're at this dirty Jersey truck stop and she's trying to get money and, and it's like, the yeah. hard and whatever. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, this yeah. biker gives me his cheeseburger. He's like, hey, you know, fucking you right. need a burger. But I was like thin back then. Ooh. I was a fucking piece. Yeah, dude. You know, so that is... And, you made and I was it, never raped. You know, here's the thing. You, you made it out unscathed. I made it out unscathed. I was going to ask. I was never touched because my parents were like... My grandmother and mother were really paranoid. So if I went to a bathroom, my grandmother would stand outside mm. the bathroom like making sure nothing happened. Now, if my parents were smarter, they would have put my pussy put on the, boy the street. Put the boy pussy and on the street. We live in Bel Air. <laughs> Dude, well, that's what I was going to say is that it's kind of a shame because yeah. what happened to Amanda Bynes or whoever? It's crazy. As a, I almost feel like you would have survived. I think you would have literally made a guy sign something before yes. you sucked him off, even yes. at nine. I, I was all, smart. Now, I I'm not, <laughs> let's not advocate for this, but <laughs> I knew what I was doing. I knew what I was doing. Um, if I had to, well, all I'm saying is, yeah. if molestation is zero-sum game, that's right. And you can save a child who was destroyed mentally and put me by in going that, back yeah. in time and getting and you molested. Him with Tim you're not even, dude. You've never even met Lewis. By the way, you, you sign sign me up. You wouldn't. You wouldn't even I receive would my call. Be here in the gas digital studio. <laughs> you would be podcasting where it all started. <laughs> You would have become an executive somehow. Um, you would have started as an actor. Yes. And now, and you I would. I do feel bad though. It is horrible. Now, obviously, we're kidding. Yeah. But it is bad, you know, and I'm not, I'm not accusing anyone of being molested, but you do see these guys like Cole Sprouse or whoever. Yeah. He's smoking the cigarettes on Caller Daddy, and he's just very like, you know, he seems like really out of it. And I don't know what it was, right? I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's molestation. It could have been Dylan. I don't know which Sprouse right. was. Right. Oh, but, the, the guys from uh, but the thing Big about, Daddy. You the, think it was Adam Sandler? No, no, no. your penis. <laughs> And they pull down those on the way. No, I don't know what. I don't. But it's like these, 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 these kids that become successful Rob actors. Rob Schneider on the set of yeah, Big Dad is like, that, you can do it. <laughs> Suck my penis. How embarrassing. <laughs> By the way, how embarrassing is that? You're like, I got molested on the set of Big Daddy. They're like, well, that, that tracks. How shameful. Anyway, but all these I'm kids sorry, that yes. went through Hollywood mm -hmm. at a young age do seem insane. Yeah. It, sure. the, you don't seem to get out alive. Like no. they all seem a little crazy. Um, well, it's crazy, insane to do. It's I an mean, insane thing to do. Like it, I, but I met a bunch of young. I'm doing this movie with Addison Ray. Yes, who you perfect know, perfect blend. Of me styles. and Addison Ray, like a lot of people, they're both. You know, listen, people like us because we're hot. Yeah. We're sexy. <laughs> we're young. We represent a lot of things to women. Yeah, I my fan base is mainly teenage women who are looking for. Yeah. Um. Uh, uh, they're looking for advice, and my advice to all of them is keep your pussy away from me and don't vote. <laughs> don't even register. <laughs> don't even register. It's not sexy. Okay. Is there anything less attractive than a woman voting? <laughs> but I, I'm kidding. React to this, Hassan. <laughs> 
But no, I, what I think is like, uh, so by the way, this Addison Ray, by the way, is yeah. lovely. Like I hate to, you yeah, walk yeah, in yeah. there and you go, I bet she's a bitch. Right, right, right. She's actually not. Well, what she's is she? She's like a right. nice, like lovely person. And I guess you would be, because it goes one of two ways. You're either a monster. Of course. Or you're not. She was like a really fun, cool chick that reminded me like, oh, like I get it. Like she's also really attractive. So it's like in the head of a straight guy, I'm like, oh, this is, I get this. I, you know, here's my problem with a lot of um, the ear things. Mm -hmm. The ear pod, ped, pod. Poops. Let's talk about it. They're very expensive and you lose them. God, do you lose them? I lose them all the time. I'm on my fourth pair. I wish I always had Raycons because Raycon is a premium audio brand at a perfect price point. So you can listen to what you want, when you want, without breaking the bank. I mean, Raycon is great. That's a lot of good stuff. It's really good. It's uh, ear buds but they're good they're earphones i don't know what i can say what these are but <laughs> they are good they're cheaper i mean they have, pay, they have, they have pay later options you and can pay 18 dollars and have new headphones wow are you nuts pay later <laughs> pay later pay over three or four years <laughs> for the headphones it's fine because the reality is here's the reality that money that you could put into the very kind of like you say oh i'm gonna buy the whole again Take that money, invest. Mm. Don't be an idiot. Crypto. Yep. Start a business with a friend. <laughs> right, right. Currency right. arbitrage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any of that stuff will do. IPOs. Mm -hmm. Don't be stupid. They have fifty thousand five star reviews. They're they're they they have noise noise isolation awareness mode. Three customizable sound profiles. It's amazing. I love that. Custom gel tips for the perfect, most comfortable in your fit. Crystal clear, call quality, water and sweat resistance, eight hours of playtime. Mm. So go to buyraycon.com slash Tim today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash Tim to score 15% off. Buyraycon.com slash Tim. Have you ever used a Raycon? Oh, I love a Raycon. Nothing like a Raycon, folks. It, folks, I'm not kidding around. And I'm still paying it off. I'm still paying it off. That's the I of chose it. the layaway plan. I chose the layaway plan, and it's yeah. done wonders. I chose the layaway. Well, this is. I'll just tell people financially what I do. You can follow me if you want. Doesn't matter. Yeah. What happened was I was going to buy the full headphones. I decided not to. I decided to put eighteen dollars down and finance the rest. <laughs> I took the capital. Yep. That I was going to put into the headphones. I started a drop shipping business. Yeah. <laughs> After the drop shipping business, I took my money. Which I was also um, um, investing into cryptocurrencies. My right. cryptocurrencies were showing gains. Mm -hmm. I then took all my drop shipping cryptocurrency money and I started investing in real brick and mortar businesses like weed shops yep. and CBD. Mm -hmm. So now I own like all of the weed shops and CBD shops in Arizona. That's awesome. Dude. Um, I started buying into all of these. I'm um, private equity mm -hmm. now with Blackstone, Steve Schwartzman, <laughs> yeah. BlackRock. <laughs> Um, I'm, I work with Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett at, um, uh, Berkshire Hathaway of with a lot of what I'm doing right now. I'm doing a lot of deals with Bob Lee, who is a, uh, executive in San Francisco. Incredible. Uh, who, what did Bob Lee run? I don't know. What did Bob Lee I run? I couldn't tell you. Cash app, right? So I'm doing a lot right now with Bob Lee and, um, None of that would have been possible if you had had to pay for these headphones. Yeah, and R.I.P. Bob Lee, he did just get killed. <laughs> oh, that's the guy who killed <laughs> Bob Lee. Trying to do a bit. No one knows who Bob Lee is. Like that trying to do a finance bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah. totally get this. She, yeah, she made you. She made you think for a second. She made me think for a yeah, second yeah, yeah, that yeah. I had gone down the wrong yeah, path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, in a not that she'd be available if I chose. Not that, like, no, no, no. Not no, that no. that. Like the women that I would hook up with now mm -hmm. are more masculine than men. Of course, like the 100%. women that would be available to me. Yes, I was in a diner last night. A long island waitress walked up, and I one of my producers from California, and she and we go. He orders some faggy, you know, eggs <laughs> yeah, or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. egg there, whites. Some, and I go. He's from California, and she goes, "Yeah." She looks at him. She goes, hey, "Where's your surfboard?" <laughs> Where's your surfboard? And I'm like, oh, that's. Yeah, which is like, we're also on Long Island. They surf here. Yes. You know, but. I'm you like, know. but so, but she, she was him. actually, super, and I'm doing this, this movie with these kids, and they're young. Uh, they're not kids or adults, but they're young, yeah. uh, attractive actors. And they start, at one time, they started to uh, break out in song. Mm. 
on the set. Well, and that's just in the script or just for fun? Oh, just for fun. Wow. And they started singing Bohemian Rhapsody in the green room. And then you start realizing, like, oh, they're theater kids. Yeah, well, also their lives have gone so well. It's so well. Addison like, Rae's you a gotta realize, perfect example. You gotta realize, if me or anyone I knew broke in the song at any moment. Oh, my God. It would be a signal of such a mental break. Yeah. Like, such a full mental collapse. My agent, they would all go and go, we gotta get him in the wagon. Yeah. <laughs> Get him in the wagon, give him a couple of steroid <laughs> shots, and get yeah. him back out on the stage. Yeah. But it, but those kids- You would have been beaten as a child be, if you started singing. Unless it was like, we're doing it for money. Right, right, right. But otherwise, like, but their lives have been so good, and they're so attractive, and they're actually, here's the thing. They're very nice. They're all nice. Yeah, well, they're all because, rich too, right? Uh, yeah. She like Imagine being like a rich girl. Like, yes, it go, you could create- you're right. the The opportunity is either like the biggest monster of all time, yeah, like this careerist climber yes. who has all the resources, or would it see? I don't know her at all, right? I've yeah. seen like a couple TikToks videos, but it's like it just seems like she, everything has gone. Like you can't have a more charmed life as like things born are into a rich family. And I think she'd admit that she'd yeah. go, "Things are good." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. she also works her ass off. She's doing acting like. There's stuff about her where you're like, a lot of them don't, right? Yeah, and a it's lot a romantic of comedy and you're, you're the two leads? We are the two leads. <laughs> it's called... <laughs> yeah. What they're doing here, <laughs> Spyglass has decided yeah. to end... They've decided to end their company. Yeah. It's a real throwback. <laughs> it's a producer. It's like it's a it's a it's a nice spin on the Harvey Weinstein story. It's a nice spin on they, the Harvey they Weinstein story. It's a romance. It's what if <laughs> what if Harvey? what if the what if the 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 actresses were like found it nice? <laughs> <laughs> what if they found it charming? When I was like, get in here, get in the room. Um, you want to be in a Tarantino movie or not? Yeah, no, it's I'm a, I play a security guard who right. gets decapitated. This awesome. is not. Well, I yeah, don't want to yeah. give away the lead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a slasher yeah, yeah, film. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, I'm not. It, awesome, there was a though. clique of kids who were like, they are the wrote rom com. But that's also so smart though. To like, I don't know what the project is at all. You told me very little about yeah. it. Yeah, but. It's genius to use those kids in something like that. Of course, who are you going to use? Us? Yeah. yeah. Well, but it's like you could pick like, you know, more serious quote actors. unquote actors, but there is something, and I'm sure. But I think acting at a certain level, like if you're young and good looking, what is that? Like this isn't Philip Seymour Hoffman. Like, yeah. let's just be honest. What really is acting if you're young and hot? It's like, I'm mad. I'm going to fight you because you look at my girl or I'm sad. No. Well, it's not. Well, I mean, in a movie, a slasher. You don't need but to in any teeny bopper, sure. What is the cast of Wednesday? No offense. Yeah, I'm, I haven't know, seen it. I know one of them, but like they're pouty. They're pow I'm pouty today. Yeah, and today I'm angry. It's like <laughs> yeah, this yeah, yeah. isn't. It's like the because by the way, young people don't like unless they've seen their family burn in a fire. They don't really have that complex of emotions, mm -hmm. so it's not that layered. You're not. You're not like translating some really complex, like everybody talks about that scene in White Lotus where Megan Fahey does that kind of this brilliant thing where you could see her like realizing all these things on the beach just in her face. It's kind of amazing. There's none of that. Right. In fucking Wednesday. Right, right, There's right, none of that right, in this right, slash of it. Right. It's just young people being hot and being like, I'm angry now. No, no, no. Well, I'm sure, I mean, Eli Roth is fucking a genius, he's right? A, he's so, a killer. He did Hostel. He's a killer. I mean, he's literally he's killed murderer. people. No. Yeah. He's a, uh, He's he loves he's a brilliant horror director. But that's what so I without knowing it, I would assume there's some like subtext there. Yes. Where you 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 cast TikTok kids. I don't know what the project is like. Like a good example is in like uh, Starship Troopers, yes. where they just wanted the hottest, most plastic dumbasses. Yeah. Because they're like we're recreating basically propaganda, right? This is like Nazi propaganda, right? And so like you look at the cast and it's like yeah. The guy, the main leader, looks like a gay porn actor. Right, you know what I mean. The the lead, and then it's like, uh, what's her face? Uh, Charlie Sheen's ex was just hot as shit, but not a good actor. Like, right. So it's like there is a time where you pick bad actors on. Right. Yeah, Denise Richards. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But here's the Casper thing: Casper Van Dam. So I actually, been in shit. I actually think this chick is probably pretty good. Interesting, because she takes it. I saw her on set. She actually takes it very seriously, where I was kind of surprised. And I actually looked at it, and I've been on sets. I was just on a set of one of the biggest films coming out where I was 
fucking up and being yelled at <laughs> by the direct, like being screamed at. <laughs> the, and I'll be able to tell people what movie yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully my scenes in it. Yeah, we yeah, know yeah. The jury is out. <laughs> I think it was great. I think it was great. Yeah. I think it was great. Um, and I want to, I don't want to say what movie it is. It's going to come out. I and, know this. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. told me about this. And, uh, but I, so I know. And it is a big movie. It's a huge movie. If I'm in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> they get cut out. out of that. One. I'll I will do something if I'm cut out. Mm -hmm. I don't deserve to be cut out. No. We'll now see. we'll see what happens. But yeah. I w observed people, mm -hmm. and uh, she was taking it very serious. And I think she's probably because Eli's not going to put somebody in who's not good. Yeah. He's going to put somebody in who's actually good. And I think she always kind of wanted to be an actress and then she maybe just got into TikTok. Like, but, but do you know what I mean in terms of directors yes, can use yes. people without really their full not? They're not fully in on it. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, for sure. Like a great director yes. is kind of like, yes. you know what I'm saying? That's probably me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that yeah. might be me. <laughs> That's maybe where, what I'm doing. They're, yeah. they're just, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, but it's cool, you know, it's interesting because I'm keenly aware that I'm a comedian who can act, right? but I'm not an actor. And you know you're not an actor when you hang out with some of these kids where you go, oh, they just have that theater kid energy that I don't have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, like, literally someone will start being like, you know, they'll just burst into song. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's appropriate for them. Yeah. And well, I just sat there kind of like... You know, like, of course, no okay. theater kid energy is brutal, and it's, it's brutal. so so self serious too about nothing, oh my. about acting. Like so, so one of the kids, he's like a really good looking dude, and I like I was like talking to him and like you're like, hey, you want to hang out? Yeah, no, you, I you want to meet. I win. I'm professional. You want to meet Louis J. Gomez? I'm professional on set. <laughs> well, they can meet cooler people. Yeah. Than that. <laughs> you want some supplements from Onyx? <laughs> you don't have to start with Louis Gomez. Yeah. How about yeah. a couple of tickets to the mothership? <laughs> but. So one of these guys, <laughs> I was talking to him and he like, he does this thing with his eyes where he's like, like really trying to get the scene from Clifford up, get the scene Clifford. from Clifford, get the scene from Clifford up where Martin big Short. Red oh, with Martin No, Short. with Martin I Short. Thought, yeah, and he's yeah. trying to be a real boy. Get oh, this scene great up. Movie. This is a brilliant scene because this is how the kid, like they kind of look at you like, I was like, oh, hey man. And I was talking to him and I think he thought I was going to say something like very serious. Right. So he just was like, he just looked at me like. And you're like, oh, they're they're just at every moment these people are just trying on, yeah, people to be trying on right. faces. There's no authenticity. That's the thing with those kids. It's like they'll do anything. They'll just like you don't know who you're talking to. But that's I think the only way to be a really good actor. Right. I guarantee if you met any of these guys, it's the same thing. No way Ben Affleck is any different. Yeah. There's no way. Brad There's Pitt, zero Brad way. Pitt's probably exactly like that. A hundred percent. Him in particular, he's such a good character actor, 100%. too. A hundred percent. They're yeah. all like that, and they need to be. That's the thing. It's like certain people need to be, and I'm sure it's like it's a nice kind of inauthentic, right? It's not like some schizophrenic roaming the streets, stabbing you. It's like, oh, this is a person who just can kind of be a bunch of different things. And if you're super hot, I guess that's kind of the book. Like, if you're a super hot person, yeah. what's the point of picking one personality? <laughs> right? Because right. you could kind of get away with a lot you of shit. You could do whatever you want. So if you're a super hot guy, you might go, I want to be a dick today. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put on a leather jacket and be a dick. Do we have that scene up? The Let's one watch. thing that I find weird, <laughs> which is, you know, like your middle name. <laughs> doing it right now. Can you just <laughs> act like a human boy for one minute here? Look at me like a person. <laughs> you can't do it for more than a few seconds. Look at me like a human boy. Don't mess around. This is so fucking good. But that's the way they they're like, yeah. like you talk that's to them it. and they're like, like they don't know how deep they're always ready to get deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they don't know how deep the conversation can be. So they're kind of like. Are you laying like life knowledge? Because right. they look at me like I'm an elderly oh, person. Oh, of course, dude. They look at me like I'm Jack Lemon. You're a wizened crone. I'm like 38, but they they look at me like I'm like an old man who's going to say something very profound before he dies. Yeah. <laughs> gather around, yeah, children. They're like gather around the wisdom, and I was like, at Skang Fest <laughs> several years ago, I was there, but. but but that's the thing where I'm keenly aware of like, oh, I'm not an actor. Yeah. I can act and I can do that. And I would like to do it if it was my movie, if I was in control of it. 
Yeah. Do you are you doing more shit like that? I'm trying. I'm trying to act a little bit. I mean, this this uh this year's been all about I mean, I've been on the road nonstop for the last two non-stop. years. Nonstop. I got I'm filming a special in May. I just put out a little crowd work special if you yeah. got, if you want to go watch sure. it, folks. Uh but yeah, that's that's gotta be that's kind of the goal where it's like it would be nice to just it's act fun to, a little bit. To, fun to do some of that shit. Uh yeah, I'm doing a little indie movie. I did one scene, you know, you know, when yeah. you do like a romantic comedy and they meet a weird guy right. who yells at the attractive people on a bus. Yes. I did one of those scenes, you know, that's perfect. It's always kind of going to be something of that And nature. that's fine. I don't need, but that's, I feel yeah. the exact same way you do where it's like, I'm not a fucking actor. No, but no, no. I like, I like doing I comedy. I wish I would, like, if I could do it over again, like I think sometimes I go, what if I could do it over again? I love these people who go, I would change nothing. It's like, okay. Come on. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but if I could do it over again, I'm thinking. I just of, love the person I am now. Yeah, I'm you have a thinking about addiction. like the jobs that I could get. Like that is a plum gig. If oh, you could yeah. just be a hot actor who doesn't really have any like, you're just like yeah, every and you meet these people, you talk to them, you go, and it's not like they're they're just like detached in this way mm-hmm. that like comes from just being young. And successful. Oh yeah, dude. And just like, just like everybody. Here's the thing with hot people: everyone is always nice to them. Everyone loves them. And actors, especially. It's Ugh. like you add hot, like a hot waitress who works at like a oh, bar. No. People throw things at. Yeah, her. but a hot, a hot, like rich, successful person. Oh yeah. It's it's life on easy mode. There is a collapse that happens. Yeah. For, for those that can't transition. Well, that is when a the great phase. Point. That is a good point. You know? The collapse is never too far. The collapse is not too far. Because here's what happens to these actors. They get some heat in LA. Then they all go to New York and they take a photo with a, like, you know, in an alley smoking a cigarette. <laughs> yeah. Looking at the ground. The they, rebellious phase. Yeah, they've been in New York for 48 hours yeah, yeah, and they yeah, act yeah. like, you're like, this is, it's, I'm really going through it. And then what happens is they try to be like the real actor because they've grown out of the teeny bopper yeah, bullshit yeah, roles. Yeah. And then they try to be like, oh, I got to be a real actor. And then some of them don't make that leap. Right. And then they're fucked. They're fucked big time. And by fucked, I mean still rich and gorgeous. Yeah, 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 yeah. But some of them can't handle that. They might do some drugs. Yeah. That's the advantage of getting a career when you're a big, fat, ugly piece of shit. That's right. (laughs) You know, it's like, they can't take it from us. They can't take it from you. (laughs) They can't take it from, the only one who can is the Lord. Yeah, which, that's around the corner. The only one who can is the Lord. Can you get up a little bit of this Cole Sprouse interview? I just want to see, because we just want to, we want to diagnose the actor here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you can tell, and he's like, literally this, by the way, can we take the money back from this call her daddy chick enough with this? $60 Sixty million dollars. Can we take that back? They really hit a jackpot. Spotify I mean, can we take that something? back? It's horrific. It's atrocious. It's the worst thing I've ever watched. I look at it the other way, where it's like, you know, good for her robbing those no, Swedish. Yes, pricks, yes, you know? good on her. <laughs> yeah, good yeah, for yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just going, like, I'm watching this person. No one watches that. I'm show watching anymore. this woman interview, and I go, this is not great. She's really not great at this. No yeah. offense to her. Right. I, to None be honest, no offense. Just this, everything you've you've uh, this planned in your life. This ain't Barbara working. Walters. I <laughs> yeah, mean, yeah, the yeah. show was about her talking about getting anal, and I get that. And that's interesting. But now she's doing these interviews and um, talk what about your it? asshole more. I really, mean, look, it was a great means to an end. <laughs> this is what Gas Digital does. This is what I love about it. Do you mind if I have a cigarette? Please have your cigarette. Okay. You know what, Gold? Let's open the door. I don't know. People get people are all oh cool man. About it's fine. Everyone's smoking weed in like a studio, but and not a fucking like, cigarette. Can I have tobacco, and everyone gets like this. It's fine. It's fucking fine. I'm curious. Mm. Did you even go to like elementary school? Even that. Preface. I did. Um, it was off and on. It's we gone. it Stop was in between jobs mainly. What was it? Or, even that preface of like, do you mind if I smoke a cigarette? Yeah. Like, Everyone's cool with weed, but whatever happened to cigarettes? Whatever, man. hey. You know? Remember when you could smoke a cigarette in a studio? It's like, no, you're like 19, you're 20 years old. Yeah, <laughs> what, what happened to smacking women in the face yeah. and smoking cigarettes? Why do I got to eat at this lunch counter with a black guy? <laughs> yeah, because he thinks he's in Mad Men. Yeah, yeah, Watch yeah. a little bit of this, because it is kind I'd of- I'd love to. It is interesting. To, it's, it, it's a fine diagnosis of the people we're talking about was homeschooled which is great because to be honest i did not feel like i missed out on much everyone that talks to me about their high school experience i was like this sounds fucking horrible 
It wasn't great. It wasn't yeah. great, Cole. But I'm wondering, do you remember when you were in elementary school? Like, how did people treat you? Because I know you weren't famous, famous, but like mm. Big Daddy, you were what, five? Yeah, six. And when we were kids, I don't think they really cared too much. Some of them knew that we were actors, but Dylan and I, uh, Dylan specifically was a huge bully. So our navigation through elementary school and middle school, we were like fucking dicks. <laughs> what? Yeah. How would he bully people? Uh, he would beat them up. He would beat them up. And then I became known as the twin that would come up and be like, I'm so sorry for my brother. Wait, I kind I of feel like that was your character also yeah. on um, Zach and, and Cody. Very, well, I think... I think the writers on Zach and Cody took a lot of cues from uh, from you know our actual personalities. Now, by the but, way, um, she gets yeah. sixty million dollars for this. Tell Antif I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Get me the balaclava. I'm kind of ready to go full tanky because yeah. that sixty million. No, that's crazy. To be like she's sitting there in fucking claw. What what is she in those fucking? What are those shoes that Mario Batali used to wear before right. he Crocs? Crocs. She's before sitting you- there in Crocs. Cole Sprouse is smoking a cigarette, and she's like, so tell me about your brother. And he's like, he was a bully when he was six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that gets you six Im- million. Imagine getting beaten up by a child actor. Imagine getting beaten six. by a Sprouse, <laughs> by Cole Sprouse, when they were young. By the way, Mario Batali, that could be the spin, the, the sequel to the- uh, Here's the thing about Mario Batali. You could, pull, you could crush Mario Batali's fucking life story. Now, <laughs> Mario Batali- <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if the they, biopic? By the way, that All our friendship is- would end so quickly because we'd both be reading for that role. Yeah. <laughs> Every fat comic in America would be just sitting there, and they'd be like, "Okay." And can you imagine that horrible script? Because by the way, not a feature. We're talking like a no. lifetime, movie. lifetime, yeah, lifetime yeah, yeah. movie of the week, and like literally, they'd be like, "Because when you go do these auditions, you like slate, you say." Uh, your name mm-hmm. and where you live, you know, and and uh, and you see it be like uh, Tim Dillon, Stavros Halkias, whatever, New York, whatever. Yeah. And then you go, and then you have to read the lines, you know, and then you'd be like, "You like these clams? <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, you like working here? I put my whole life into this goddamn restaurant. <laughs> the least thing, the last thing, the least you could do is look at me. Look at me. Yeah." Look at me. You want me to show you how to make this dish? That's called tagliatelle. <laughs> you want to show you? Come here. What's wrong? <laughs> What's wrong? I don't understand. I thought you liked working I here. I thought you liked it. They got tagliatelle in Indiana? Yeah. Let me teach you something. I thought you liked it. The gnocchi has to be done just right. <laughs> Get over here. Get over buddy. here. <laughs> You fucking bitch. He'll never come back. By the way, Mario Batali had an apology. We've talked about it on the oh, show, but the it just did The cinnamon roll, the, he cin- put the, the rape cinnamon, cinnamon roll. Yeah, he was like, I'm sorry I raped everybody, but here's some <laughs> and by the seasonal way, pastries. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one of the best, apo- that, that's yeah. the king of the celebrity apologies. The thing about Mario Batali is he was a good cook. He was a great chef. Right. You know, he did a squid and pasta at Babo that was great. Right, right, uh, he did right. a lamb ragu that yep. was lovely. And... He also was um, a rapist right. and uh, an abuser of women, and that is not good. We're out on that. We're out on that. So we have. I don't fuck with Vitali. Here's the other thing. There's a lot of people that can make a lamb ragu, like Nancy Silverton at Osteria Moza in West Hollywood. Okay. And she does not rape anyone. Not to our knowledge. Yeah. Don't love the outfits all the time that she does. <laughs> yeah, but, but if, if you had to pick one or the other. quirky, but I will go with that. We... Because see, Batali to me is not like an OJ. No, not even no, close. Batali's, if I saw Batali now, I'd be like, get the, I'd spit I, in his face. I, I would actually, I was never really excited to see Batali. No. You never of really all the celebrity wanted. chefs, even pre yes. a, a, a assault scandals, it's yeah. like, the I'd celeb- take him or leave Here's him. what the Food Network did to me. I know they created the celebrity chef, but like, they also just to me gassed these chefs up so much. Their egos are like insane. Yeah. Especially, completely insane. I get, I get the top guy. Like, look, Guy Fieri's sure. the man. Yes, you know what I mean? yes. He fucking rules. I like him a lot. It's a tournament of champions. Great show. He's wearing bling that a rapper couldn't pull off. Guy Fieri is the only guy who basically said, "Let me make a show out of like going to these places." And and why had no one done that? Yeah, let's go to these places that like people talk about and. 
They're really good food, but also they have health code violations. Yeah, of course. They have health code violations, but I still shit. think they should be. Yeah, there's hair in it. Mm-hmm. Who cares? Well, have you been to one in, like, in your hometown? That's like It was on diners, drivers, and dives. It's like, it's not good. Like no, Half of them are horrible. Half horrible. of them are pretending. Yeah. Like, they're like, they're like, I went to the diner yeah. by me, which yeah. is like, you know, you're getting, you're getting some toothless lady. And you're still in Queens. No, I'm talking about in Baltimore when I okay. grew, where I was growing up. Yeah, the diner by me, it's you know it's fine. Right, it's like the fries are in the freezer. The everything is frozen. Like it's just right. you go there. It's you go there. It's it's two a.m. Yeah, some toothless lady who's trying to get her kids back is gonna fuck right. up half of your order. <laughs> right, right. Uh, and then there's a picture on the wall of Guy Fieri. Guy Fieri, and they have like uh, their seafood tower. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. like you you brought in. You bought a seafood tower from a different restaurant right. and served it to Guy when he was yeah. here. They'll literally be like, our, our lump crab cakes. It's like, you don't have lump crab cakes right. here. You get pancakes and yeah. fucking sausage here. A lot of it's fake. It's all fake. And yeah. one of them was sad. I walked to one of them. I was on the road. I literally don't remember where I was. I walked in one of them and the proprietor had died. And it was Ooh. literally just a picture of him and Guy Fieri. And then he was like bald with cancer. And they're like, R.I.P. Rick. <laughs> I'm like, okay, this is a little rough. This but, is a little yeah. tough. That's a tough wall. <laughs> Yeah, it's a really, tough wall. I don't want to see this while I'm eating chicken cacciatore. Yeah, but I mean, the Food Network to me, like I remember the heyday of it was when me and my grandparents would watch Emerald Show, and he mm. was like Emerald Live, and he'd be like Bam, Bam and of course, Bam, and you know everybody was so excited to be on Emerald Live, and uh, he was the forerunner. He was the forerunner. He was the big, you know. To me, I still think Emerald Lagasse. You know, if we're looking at celebrity chefs, he's up there in the top. Yeah, he's three. Jordan. He's Jordan, and Guy is LeBron. Yeah, it's a generational thing. That's you know? right. And you then and Guy Fieri, I don't know if he was he a chef. Probably. Yeah, he had a, dude. His restaurant. I hated Bobby Flay. I still hate Bobby I, Flay. He, I love watching beat Bobby Flay to root against him. I hate. I hate the premise of that show where he's like, "Let's go find something that's being cooked the same way for forty years, and let me see if I can beat it because yeah. I'm a cunt." <laughs> yeah. It's like ah. Uh, he also is a pussy getter, though. You know, that's another reason he to does hate, fuck a lot to hate Bobby Flay. And didn't he? Uh, didn't he marry that rich chick? Didn't he marry remember. a rich chick? I don't know. He might have. Well, I'm not a I'm not a Bobby Flayhead. I like Emerald. I could fuck with Lydia Bastianich sure. from Philidia, New York. <laughs> sure, sure. I mean sure. that bitch could carve a fucking chicken with a knife. Like I yeah, loved Lydia. Of course. Del Posto, Philidia. She's a gangster. Lydia Bastianich. I- Ina Gardner, Barefoot Contessa. Barefoot Contessa. Gangster. Frank Liotti, the best bit about that. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm a big chopped head personally. Yeah, people like chop. Big Tom Kalinko is okay. Top chef. I don't fine. Know, I don't know. He was good. He was good. Uh, what, now, Paula Dean was the one that fell from grace. Because Which, yeah. She was exactly what you thought she would <laughs> yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. It's like, so it's very, it's, it's like yeah. if she didn't say the N word, that would be more surprising. And she was just abusing her staff yeah. and making them dress up as slaves. <laughs> I think Get so. Get up what Paula Dean got canceled she for. She said the N word as well, which. Can't do that. You can't, but look at it. But her. it's Paula Dean. It's, it's, oh, down home. You want, you want somebody whose whole thing is about authentic Southern yeah, cuisine? Yeah, well, nothing's more. <laughs> You're authentic. dropping a couple ends yeah. in the kitchen. Nothing's more authentic than Paula Dean. But I think. Fatty she got, shit. I think she got canceled for making the. Yeah. Paula Dean used the N word, wanted. Let's get the, the headline up. Thanks, gentlemen. <laughs> Paula Dean used the N-word, wanted slaves to serve a wedding I mean, dinner. that's out of control. I mean... Can, uh, okay, get wanting the slaves... A true is, southern plantation-style wedding would include waiters dressed as slaves, Dean says in a deposition. That's awesome. So I she mean, her Jesus argument was, again, verisimilitude. She was like, we're doing it real. We're doing it can right. Can you imagine, by the way... Like, being that much of a racist that you're being deposed, like you're in a deposition, and you have to argue that point. You're like... Yeah, it was a southern Look, style. I wedding. don't like it. I, I don't like it when, I don't, I when don't they like made it. when they made Schindler's List. Yeah. the guards had to be yeah. racist towards the Jews. Yeah, I'm a, I'm making I'm making a a, a realistic I'm doing dinner an here. Authentic southern <laughs> style wedding. Of course, I'm going to have slaves. <laughs> yeah. Why would I not yeah. hire black people and make them dress up as slaves? And by the way, the uh, the. Jackson subsequently asked Dean what type of uniform she preferred. She servers the servers to wear. Well, what I would really like is a bunch of little oh my god, oh a little n words to wear long sleeve white shirts, black shorts, and black bow ties. You know, in the Shirley Temple days, 
They uh, used to tap dance around. Oh, my. Shirley Temple? Paula laughed and said, now that would be a true Southern wedding, wouldn't it? Because, but we can't do that because the media would be <laughs> on me about that. <laughs> Cancel culture is going too far. She's like, the goddamn woke media won't let me get a bunch of little N-words tap dance. It's like, God, Jesus Christ. <laughs> We've gone I mean, too far. I also, love, I also love the idea that Paula she's like, Dean. it has to be an authentic Southern wedding. You know, like in a Shirley Temple movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, what it's the crazy. fuck are we talking about? It's literally about? just, she's conflating a bunch of different kinds of racism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She just, she's covering the racism. It's racist saying, fusion. It's an authentic, but she really just wants Al Jolson, like blackface. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? She's like, it's an authentic Southern wedding. Right. But, you know. We have a Jew in blackface singing yeah, jazz standards. It's fucking crazy, man. It's crazy, but, you know, that's, I think, part of the problem when you steep yourself so much in your culture that you can't get out. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that sometimes you need to just take a breath. Ask one black person how they feel about that. Yeah, Paula. like, ask one person. Just one. Just run it by them, like, super casually. Go, let, let me ask you a question. Hey, yeah. let me ask you a question. <laughs> well, me, we're doing a Southern style <laughs> wedding. Uh, would this... <laughs> Would this be, I mean, let me just say, can you sit down? Let me yeah. ask you a question. Sit down for this. <laughs> if I said to you, we're doing a Southern style wedding and I want some, you know, black people, they're going to be servers at the wedding. And I wanted them to kind of, you know, dress as slaves <laughs> and tap dance. <laughs> would that, would that be offensive? What do you think? Is there any part of that? That's the best sign. Yeah. So is there any part of that that would offend you? <laughs> oh, the whole thing? Oh, all of it? All of it? I also don't understand why anyone would get married on a plantation. That's wild to me, too. Yeah. If you believe in, like, yeah, I don't that's, get a, it. that's a bad, that's some bad energy. If you believe I, in energy at all, yeah, it's like a lot of not chill stuff has happened right it's, there. It's kind of like. Just saying, like, we're very excited. We're getting married on an Indian burial ground. <laughs> right, right, right. We're going we're to. so excited. We're going to Auschwitz to have our yeah. nuptials. Uh, there's a Navajo <laughs> burial ground, and we've decided that me and my wife are going to go down there, and it is going to be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, but it's, um, well, people will do that. You know, I've talked about it. I, I've made this joke. It's probably real by now. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm trying to know there's old hotels, and but people will start doing, like, weddings in prisons. Yeah. A bunch of white bitches sitting in the electric chair with champagne yeah, 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 I mean 100 yeah, 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 yeah. like we'll probably outlaw capital punishment although maybe not but like eventually we might and then you know like these things are going to be tourist attractions and mm -hmm. somebody's going to be like let's get married in the fucking yeah. death chamber right 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 I guess yeah you're even saying it and it's like uh, Alcatraz yeah. I would love that Imagine we rent out Alcatraz. It'd be a great Just party. The, the, whole, the whole fucking thing. Well, I think out. they're going to close Rikers. Yeah, they say so. I think Rikers might get closed because Rikers is a nightmare. Yeah. They just have people there like with on parking tickets. Yeah. They just don't get access to plumbing. I mean, like, I don't understand. Like the way this, this criminal justice system works to me is so crazy. And I'm not a guy that says let everybody out if they've done bad things, but like yeah. the amount of people that are in for like, I smoked a joint. Especially now. I smoked a blunt. I couldn't pay my fee for hopping the turnstile of a train, and yeah. now I'm in this prison for years. Well, don't years. worry. Don't worry. There's eight cops there to check on that. Right, It's like, right. who gives a fuck yeah, about subway turnstile? Yeah, hopping? yeah. I, I, think, I don't think you can let stuff like that get completely out of control, but I also don't think you should be putting people in jail for years, or people can't, yeah. like... Well, those cops don't do shit. They play Candy Crush, and every once yeah. in a while, a... Uh, Teenager comes along and they're like, all right, let's fuck up his record for hopping yeah. turnstile. Well, it should be a misdemeanor, right? It should be something quick where you can kind of get out. But then yeah. there's certain things where it's like, you know, if you throw someone in front of a train, that should have been. Yeah, a no, like, no, there's got to be. Of course. Yeah, <laughs> there's yeah, got to yeah, be. Yeah. A, it's going to be yeah. a little. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, but yeah, it's funny, man. It's funny to watch. I don't even know what on what is on the. Can we bring up the Food Network schedule now? I'm just curious as to like what would still be on this. They got. I'll tell you right now. They got a lot of beat Bobby Flay. They got Ugh. a lot of. They got a lot of tournament of champions. There's nothing better than the Food Network on a summer day when you should be outside. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's nothing that feels particularly of worse course. than watching, like, the Food Network on a summer day. Uh, well, um, it's my favorite, like, uh, road thing to watch. Oh, you got yeah. diners. You got Triple D going. Alex vs. America. Yeah, they're oh really trying. I diners, like Alex. What is Alex vs. America? I like Alex Gernichelli. She's a really good cook, but they're putting in a lot of stuff. Yeah. But she's one of my favorite chopped judges. 
Um, they always did this thing where they wanted like a lot of triple on. D's. They always wanted comedians on the Food Network, and then they like met us, and then they were like, "Oh, we don't want that at all. <laughs> yeah. We actually don't want that at all. That's a yeah. huge mistake. Right, right, right. That's a massive mistake. We don't want that at all. Not and at we're all. Sorry, we even suggested that Stavros Halkias. Where can people find you and see you and I'm a, be I mean, a part of your life? Yes, uh, I got uh, podcast Stavi's World. Come check it Fuck out. Yeah. Come do it sometime, Timmy. Uh, but the, I have a new crowd, uh, crowd work half hour. Just, yes. Just a little put together. I put it together. A little, little bonus special uh, free on YouTube right now. Stavi Baby on Twitter. Stavi Baby 2 on Instagram. I'm on tour, the Fat Rascal tour. Still a couple tickets left to the, spe- the special taping in Austin. And then in the fall, I'm just I'm all over the place playing a couple theaters. Are you doing Paramount? Austin I'm special. Doing Paramount. Fuck yeah. yeah awesome. I'm, I'm really excited for that. You will um, enjoy that. Tim Dillacomedy.com. We're on the road until mid June. Uh if you are interested. Uh if you're not, who cares? <laughs> Fuck off if you're not. If you're not, it's okay. Yeah. It is what it is. But Tim Dillacomedy.com to get uh tickets to those shows. Thank you so much. Dude, thank you. I, I appreciate really appreciate it. it. Yeah, it was great to see you, buddy.